Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Tongue TV. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at chimerism and a couple of other genetic anomalies. Now a chimera is a single animal which displays the form of multiple animals. And in Greek mythology, the chimera was a fearsome creature which had the head of a lion, the body of a goat and the tail of a dragon. We haven't quite got anything for you like that today, but what we do have is a collection of chimeras and paradoxes which are owned by Deb King and Wayne Larks at Marillion Magic and um, what we're going to do is we're going to get Wayne to run through what we've got and um, go from there. First up we've got the chimera um, as you can see it's like part normal snake I believe it's a sieve from the jags and you've got the white parts which are the leucistic or the super form of the jag and I mean you can obviously see that it's um parts which parts which and oh my god I can't wait to sort of breed this guy and try and find out what what it's going to do and all that sort of stuff so yeah you definitely see the two phenotypes yeah. there you know you've got your normal patterning there and your brilliant white there which yeah sort of represents the super form of the jag. Next up, this is a um, normal sibling out of a exanthic to jag breeding. And um, so it's a head, head exanthic, but it also shows just patches of exanthic in amongst all the color, and like all the way down the body pretty much, if it did cooperate. Uh, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, but We'll give you a closer look later. Yeah, I mean, it might not be as clear on the camera, but you can definitely see clear patches of axanthism. Yeah. And you can also see the normal wild type through it as well. Yeah, I believe yeah. once it's an adult, it'll stick out. It'll stick out yeah. more. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, we're not actually sure either if this is actually a chimera or if it works sort of like a paradox, however that works or whatever. So. Yeah. Just another we'll just, genetic we'll just We'll, we'll just see, find out. See how it goes. Yeah, so. yeah. And on that subject, this one here is actually a hatchling paradox. You can see the black coming through and stuff. So that's going to be pretty interesting as well. It's obviously an adult. <laughs> as you can see. You can see how much they change. When, yeah. when this fella grows up, you're going to be um, left with this. And for me, this is visually probably the prettiest carpet python in the Australian hobby today. Oh, this is a sibling to the last one we had out and it's uh, obviously a hat but you can see these really small white dots on it. I mean, I think they'll increase over time and look heaps, heaps better. So. so you're saying that's sort of the opposite to this, yeah, yeah. which is yeah, total the term a, a reverse paradox. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or calico, some people call it. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, but we'll work it out. So here's a um, gorgeous 18-month old paradox, bred by Damien Hyde from Reptile Connections, um, and kindly lent to us. So this is a male. This is a female. We hope to breed them together at some stage. Find out what's going on with this gene, and see if it's you know, yeah, that'd be unreal, re unreal to, find some, it. to some, find some mode of inheritance to it. It would, it yeah. would. There's just, I mean, who, who wouldn't want a snake like that? <laughs> but yeah, that's not the only ones we got. We'll have a look at another one now. So yeah, this little beauty, produced by Andrew Getty, it is a um, paradox olive. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, really striking yeah. black head. Yeah, yeah. it's got a really yeah. dark tongue, which, yeah, it's amazing. Looks black, but it's actually blue. The tongue. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. raise this up, breed it, <laughs> see what we can produce. Whilst we were here, I thought we'd take the opportunity to check out what for me is the, genetically the most exciting carpet python project in Australia, and that is Wayne's Moonglow project. So. Um, just run us through what <clears throat> what you're holding there, Wayne. That's Moonglow, Sunglow, uh, Normal Sib, Ghost Exanthic. 
all from the one clutch. That's unreal. So you're basically talking about three genetic traits in there. You've got yeah. exanthic, hypo, and albinism all working in conjunction yeah. with one another. Yeah, yeah. In this guy, you've got albino, exanthic, hypo, caramel. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I reckon. Wow. Okay, so um, that's chimerism and um, some other genetic anomalies. I'm not going to try and explain these guys any further. I'm going to pass you back to somebody that uh, knows a little bit more than I do. So yeah. back to Dr. Steve again in the classroom. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. This episode, I will be predominantly talking about chimeras. As seen earlier in this episode, Wayne Larks has produced a couple of animals that we suspect are chimeras. One of these animals was from a jag-to-jag -jag pairing. To discuss this animal further, I'll firstly cover jags. This mutation is often referred to as co-dominant, with three different phenotypes. I will refer to the wild-type genotype as WW, the heterozygotes or jags as WJ, and the superform as JJ. The wild type's phenotype is normal in appearance. Jags have a reduced pattern, and the superform lacks pattern and is usually white. Jags can show varying degrees of neurological signs, and the superform is lethal, with animals normally dying shortly after full term development. So the jag to jag pairing is a head to head pairing which we are now quite familiar with, with one quarter of the offspring being wild type, half being jags and one quarter superform. A chimera is an animal which develops from the fusion of two zygotes. So two different sperm fertilizes two different eggs, forming independent zygotes. If each of these zygotes were to go full term, they would develop into a wild type animal and a superform jag. But instead, these two zygotes fuse together, resulting in an animal which has cell lines from two different individuals which happen to include two different phenotypes of our JAG gene, resulting in patches which express the two different phenotypes. This is what we believe is going on with this animal produced by Wayne. A small number of chimeras have been produced. Wayne's from his JAG to JAG pairing, and another from a hetexanthic to hetexanthic pairing. David Evans has a children's python from double het parents, which were het for T plus albinism, and Marvel. The mode of inheritance and the biological pathway causing patches of melanin in paradox albinos still remains a mystery at this stage. It is a phenomenon seen across multiple Australian species within Darwin carpets, olive pythons and spotted pythons. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Be sure to catch the next episode on Next Level Pairings.